what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Ben and unlike all of the people on your favorite Facebook group for whatever motorcycle you own, I actually do like to talk about tires. I, I really have no idea why people get so upset about it. I think maybe they just don't realize that tires are actually a pretty important part of the motorcycle. Honestly, I think one of the most important things that you can put on your motorcycle to sort of direct it where you plan on taking it. Obviously, if you, you buy a bike that is made for off-road and then you, you buy something like the Conti Sport Attack 2 and expect the bike to perform off-road, well, I can tell you firsthand from getting a set of these on my very first uh, Gen 2 KLR650 that it is definitely going to be disappointing and it might even make you feel like you bought the wrong bike. Of course, they weren't quite this wide on my KLR but they didn't look too different, really no good tread, uh, nothing usable there for getting you any sort of traction. Maybe they'd be okay for a light gravel road, but that would be about it. I would definitely not recommend these. And for those of you guys who have been around, you know what I swapped that out for, and I really did like these tires a lot to begin with. Again, this one is gonna look a little bit different, just because it's a little bit wider than it was on my bike. But this is the Shinko 804 Big Block. I purchased this tire just because well, the front looked meaty enough, it seemed like it was smooth enough and had wide enough lugs that it should have been pretty good on the road, and it definitely was. I was really pretty impressed with how it rode on the road, and really the front tire honestly was not a bad option, but the rear, because you don't have any deep cuts down the center or you know maybe a few degrees off to the side here, basically where these slots are here, if you had a slot in every lug there on both sides, kind of like you do here, I think that would help with the main issue and actually the reason that I no longer suggest this tire. Uh, there's no lateral traction, so if the tire is spinning in a forward motion, you have those lugs to keep cutting, but if you end up in a situation where you are needing traction the other way, those basically just will slide in the mud or you know snow or whatever you're in. So. Definitely not a tire that I would recommend. The front one definitely wore sort of goofy, but I'm finding just about every dual sport tire that I put on a bike, it doesn't matter how I ride it, what PSI I run, how much I use the rear brake, how much I use the front, it seems like they all end up sort of cupped and odd. But I think a lot of that's just because I'm putting tires on a bike that's maybe a little bit on the heavier side of what the tire is intended for. Now we're gonna go in sort of chronological order here, so I'm gonna jump to a different bike and that would have been my dad's 23. 13 or 2014 Triumph Tiger XC800. He bought that bike with, I think, just the stock tires on it. And after those tires that threw him to the ground on some slippery wet grass, he decided to go with something that was a little bit meatier. So he tried the Heidenau K60 Scout front and rear. This looks a little bit more aggressive than his did. He had a pretty wide tire. So, and that's kind of something that you're going to find when you look at just different sizes of tires, the tread spacing sort of changes. So if you buy a tire for one bike that has a skinny tire and then another one for a wide tire, they might look wildly different and maybe a little bit more street oriented or a little bit more uh, off-road and a little bit more aggressive depending on that size. So you do kind of have to watch that. That's why these stock images, I honestly don't like. I would try to find a picture of your bike with the tire that you're looking at already on it, just so you kind of have a better idea of what you're actually getting. These tires actually lasted him a long time. I don't remember, uh, we have a review out on the channel from a couple years back that he talked about how long they lasted. This front tire, I would not recommend though. I don't know if it's just the angle that these lugs are at or what, but I've heard from a lot of you guys and I've definitely experienced it myself. This was just not a good tire uh, on that bike. I don't know that it would be a good tire on anything lighter, I guess maybe. Um, if you're looking for something that is gonna do really pretty well on the road and last a long time and just maybe we'll get you off on the gravel once in a while. Maybe this wouldn't be a bad option, but I think there are better ones out there. Now we'll jump back to my Gen 2 KLR 650 after the big blocks. I decided to go with something that I actually did have a little bit of experience on, or I guess maybe I had experience on the other brand, the Shinko 244. The tread pattern looks exactly the same. I've heard one is a little bit softer than the other. Those tires did really pretty good on the DRZ. Obviously, I didn't have anything to compare it to. Uh, I really did like them on the KLR. However, I think just because they're a little bit of a softer tire and sort of a tall knobby and the KLR is a big heavy bike, you'd get up to like 70 miles an hour and especially with the big wide 31 inch bars on the KLR, it would kind of 
I don't know, start to wobble, even if you just gave it a little bit of input. And I, I've complained about that on the KLR, like I said, with the different tires for years. And I don't mean that I ever really ran into a situation where I was just riding down the road and it started to wander. These tires especially, it was really more like gust of wind, you know, accidentally giving the bars a little bit too much input when you're passing. Definitely sort of an odd feeling and not something that I, I guess I would recommend unless you're not going to do a whole lot of highway riding on your KLR or your other big bike. On the DRZ, I mean, that bike I never really did a whole lot of highway riding, but I can't say that I've really ran into any issues there. Um, seemed like they did really good off-road. Honestly, for an off-road tire, I, I think these are kind of hard to beat. The thing about these, though, is they actually do measure them in inches rather than the kind of standard uh, metric measurement, like up here. Uh, and if you guys are ever running into the tube versus non-tube tires, and you're wondering what it means uh, or which one you need. Essentially, if you have a spoked wheel on most bikes, they do sell some bikes with spoke wheels that are now tubeless. And a tubeless setup is really nice because you can just fix the tire rather than having to swap out a tube on the trail, meaning you can just get a patch kit and, you know, plug whatever hole you have and then, you know, hopefully move on. Really, in, in that case, you should either put a tube in then or just replace the whole tire. But uh, the nice part about a tube tire is that when you go to put it on the rim, it should be a little bit looser. And I've definitely ran into tube type tires that are not that way. But in general, I think most tubeless tires do seem to be a little bit stiffer and a little bit harder to get on and off. So my recommendation is if you're going to have a tube in your tire, you might as well order a tube tire. These tires stayed on my Gen 2 until I was ran over by a minivan and uh, they just got scrapped with the bike. I don't really remember them wearing extremely fast or extremely slow. I think it was about what I had expected. So the next tire we're going to look at here is the Motaz Tractionator Adventure. This is the rear I actually purchased a set of these and shipped them directly to the Yamaha dealer in Anago to put on my Tenere 700 before I picked it up. And when I was on my way to pick it up, uh, that's actually when the, uh, the KLR and I got ran into. And my intention with getting them put on and the, the Pirelli Scorpions taken off uh, was basically because at that point in time, the bike was so new that there weren't any crash bars out there. So I wanted to make sure that I had a tire that was definitely going to grip well. I'd heard lots of good things about the Motaz tires and I was absolutely nothing but impressed. Uh, my front did wear a little bit funny, and I don't actually know that they even offer the front anymore. I, I think no matter what, if you buy a Motaz tire, you're probably gonna be pretty happy with it. Obviously, you wanna kinda pay attention to what they are designed to do, but uh, I'll skip ahead uh, just a little bit here and say that I stuck this on uh, a KLR later on and really did like and still do like uh, how this tire performed. I don't have a whole lot of miles on it, but from the little bit of testing that I've done, this does seem like a decent front tire. But honestly, like I said, I think most of the Motaz tires are just the best that you can get. There are other tires out there that are good. These are obviously not the most, well budget friendly tire but if you're looking for the best amount of traction and the longest lasting tire honestly the motaz is really the only way to go that's what i would suggest to just about anybody and if you guys haven't noticed obviously the tires that i'm putting on these bikes are a little bit well not a little bit they're they're definitely more on the dirt side and like i said earlier i think a lot of people will look at how much they're going to ride on the road versus how much they're going to ride off-road and then sort of make a tire decision on that. You know, if you're going to spend 50% of your time on the pavement, 50% of the time on the dirt or off-road or whatever, you should get a 50-50 tire, right? But the thing is, a lot of these 50-50 tires, the tread pattern is so close on them that on a big bike, in the mud, they just kind of tend to pack up and don't really do, I think, as good of a job as people think that they should. And obviously, you know, you, you don't want to be sacrificing a whole lot of on-road performance but to be honest, none of these tires that I have used and that we're going to go over today, even the most aggressive ones, I mean, unless I just had them paired with a bike that was too heavy, I've never been on the road and wish that I had a more road-oriented tire. And I've ridden on tires that are more road-oriented, and sure, it's nice that they're a little bit smoother, but honestly, most of the bikes that I'm riding, they're not completely smooth on the highway anyways, so I mean, it... You just kind of get used to it. It all sort of bleeds together. And honestly, if you're going to take a bike off-road, if you're going to buy a big bike especially, and try to take it off-road, if you buy a tire like this, or a tire that's not really suited for mud or you know any sort of slippery, less than tacky surface, you're going to slip, you're going to slide, 
and if you're just learning it's gonna scare you and you're gonna think that you're on the wrong bike you don't have the right skills it's not worth it and then you're progressively gonna ride more and more pavement and less and less dirt there's nothing wrong with that other than the fact that if you bought a bike to go off-road you should be able to go off-road with it you should be able to be confident with it and that's why i always push more than 50 50 tires on people i just think it's worth a shot you know if you really don't like it on the road switch them out for something else so again chronological order here we're jumping over to my o2 yamaha tw200 so that of course comes with the bridgestone tw34 and the tw31 this tire i guess both of them are known as death wings i would say that this tire has definitely earned that name i'm honestly not sure what it is about it but it it definitely can take you by surprise i think some of that is maybe just the size of the front wheel on the tw it's just a bad combination but i would recommend swapping this tire out for something else the back one you don't really have a whole lot of options out there um there are a few less aggressive ones you could of course do the the atv tire swap uh, either the dangerous homemade way or uh, there are actually kits out there available now the thing is with that i have talked to my insurance anyways uh, which is state farm and they basically said it if you put a tire on your bike that is not meant to be on the road or basically on a motorcycle uh, meaning an atv tire uh, even if it is a utv tire and dot approved uh, that actually could cause you to lose coverage if they can prove or i guess even maybe they don't even have to prove it they can just say because you had this tire on here you know the bike's performance was sort of dulled or you know brought down to a level where you know we think you could have avoided this accident and what they mean by that is we don't want to have to give you any money and we found a loophole so i would strongly suggest not doing things like that i, I really don't get people's thinking when they you know try to trick their insurance companies and you know say oh that my bike's completely stock why, why are you paying for insurance if you're going to get in an accident they're going to look at the bike or you know whatever piece of machinery it is and say well this isn't what you told us it was we're not going to cover you i i don't know people might think well uh, that's a bad insurance company you, you lied to them you're you know i i really don't get that i i personally think that it's a bad idea and it's not worth it that's not what this video is supposed to be about though it's about tires and uh, I decided for some reason to stick this ridiculously giant uh, Kenda K257D classic tire on uh, the front. I definitely thought that it was going to look a little bit more like that. Of course on the TW it's a bit bigger and this one I went with the heavier ply. I think maybe that's the one that i went with i don't remember exactly you have to check into the plies and, and you'll notice that the the diameter size and like the the width of the rim can obviously change the tire but you can also get a tire that is you know maybe even just a hair bigger that will actually be drastically different and that's sort of what i ran into with this i, I had talked to one of you guys that had the sort of lighter version of this that was a, a lighter ply and uh, basically just a lot lighter in general because of it uh, and it seems like that tire uh, would be a lot better the lugs were much smaller uh, what i found with this is basically the lugs were kind of too big for the weight of the bike and the tire itself uh, especially since i put the high fender kit meaning i removed that little bracket that holds the stock fender the front end felt very heavy and kind of wild uh, because of this tire uh, and that's why i switched it out pretty quickly for the shinko 241 uh, this is uh it goes by a couple different names it's basically a trials tire uh essentially it's a really pretty old design i mean if you look at bikes from like the 70s they had something kind of similar to this and honestly i'm i mean for as simple as it is i'm really pretty impressed with it i do often wonder if the either the shinko version that looks like this or the kenda 270 would have been a better option just because i think maybe it is a little bit grippier but I don't know i wanted to try it i had already tried out the other one and i can't say i'm too displeased i haven't pulled it off the tw yet and i don't really plan on it i guess so now let's go back to the klr so when i purchased my 2022 gen 3 it just had these oem dupont k750 tires on it these don't really look like a bad tire i mean obviously they are a pretty i guess 50 50 tire i took this thing in the mud a couple times actually <laughs> i took this thing in the mud immediately after i picked it up from the dealership actually I didn't even take it home first and i i could definitely tell right away and of course some of this could be in my head but i could tell these really just were not up to the task and i think a lot of that is just because the tread is so close together and essentially what i've found with tires is that you want a tread 
that is going to be able to press itself down into the dirt, meaning it's spaced wide enough that it can actually get down in there and get some traction, not just sort of float on top. In the mud, you need to be able to fling that mud back out of the tires. That's why having the tread space apart is also important. But the other thing is, if you're out on the road, you don't want those lugs to be so small and so tall that they can kind of start to wander around a bit and you know bend over uh, under the bike's weight. Now, all that being said, I, I would really think that these would be better off-road. I don't really understand why they're not, but they're just not, and they really don't last very long. So it's not a tire that I would ever buy to put on a bike. I mean, if you're gonna buy a KLR and you don't plan on doing a whole lot of off-roading right away, or you know maybe you just wanna take it easy and just get your money's worth, I would say burn them off. Um, I swapped mine out pretty quick uh, just because I didn't want to crash the bike and hurt myself because I was being lazy. So instead, I requested a set of the D-Sports from Rocky Mountain ATV. And if you guys are unfamiliar, um, I'm sort of in their partnership program or whatever. I, I call them a sponsor. I don't know if that's really the right word. But anyways, they sent me product. I tested out. And if I enjoy it and uh, recommend it, then you guys can use the links down in the description to purchase it. And it's actually uh, the only thing that allows me to make videos like this for you guys. Uh, otherwise, I would need to go get a real job. So this is the front tire, I guess, that I was sort of thinking about when I was talking about the skinny knobbies sort of folding over in the bike feeling too heavy. The front tire just was never good on the KLR. I, I would never recommend one of these front tires for the KLR. Again, knobbies are just too far apart. They're too tall. They're too skinny they can just bend around too much and I could really feel that and even even in some of the videos uh, where I'm riding around on the highway talking about it you can actually kind of see the bike sort of do like a weird shift when it would go from one side of the tire to the other it it was not good and I've heard people say that that they've had issues on lighter bikes but I've now got a set of these on uh, my 701 and I've had absolutely no issues with them at all i I really like them a lot, actually. I haven't spent a whole lot of time on the highway, um, especially not at a warm temperature. I think it was like 50 degrees when I was out, so that might change a little bit uh, when the temps warm up and these become a little bit more pliable, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The rear tire definitely is one of my favorite tires. I mean, this is a mean, mean, meaty looking tire. Uh, it definitely looks a little bit more aggressive on my KLR uh, than the one that I got for uh, the 18-inch rear on the 701, uh, the KLR is a 17 inch rear, but if you guys saw that video, it's riding around where I was riding around uh, in the snow with it. I mean, it, it still is an awesome tire and I would definitely recommend it for the rear of a KLR, just get a different front. And again, this Motaz Tractionator Rals is the one that I stuck on the front of the KLR now. And it's a, a huge improvement. I think basically because the lugs are just so much closer together. And I specifically picked this one because it looked so similar to the D-Sport. Obviously, then it would kind of match the, the look of the rear. Uh, but also because I did really like how, how this front tire did off-road. I mean, it really, I don't know that it ever slipped. I mean, unless I was doing something really silly. And I guess the majority of the time that I'm out on a KLR in the woods, I'm doing some pretty silly stuff. So I was definitely impressed from that, uh, which is kind of why I decided to try it again on the 701. And now right about the time I stuck the Motaz Traction or Rals on the KLR, my dad got a Motaz Tractionator Dual Venture put on the Tenere 700, which is my old bike uh, that I sold to him because that front Motaz wore out, which actually, yeah, he's still got the back one on there. I wonder if he's got six or 7,000 miles on it now. I bet he does. And that back tire is still doing pretty good. Uh, but th the front got cupped and wore out uh, by 5,000, I think. Uh, so he, he swapped it over for this. And this tire, I actually recommended him because I thought it was going to be less aggressive than this tire. Because, uh, I mean, it kind of looks that way in the pictures. But here again, uh, when he got it, these lugs, I mean, this way maybe are spaced similarly. I think they're even, I think they're spaced out a little bit more that way. And I, they're definitely spaced out more this way. That that tire looks, I don't know, almost too aggressive for that bike. But being a Motaz, it seems like it handles uh, just as well as any of the other ones. Uh, does a really, really good job on the road. Feels plenty solid and sticky and feels definitely solid and sticky off, off the road. Now, this next tire here, the Continental TKC 80s, I was really pretty excited to test out because I had heard so many good things from them. Uh, if you guys had ever watched Mason's ADV, I think he pretty much ran these exclusively on his KLR. And watching the type of trail riding that him and his crew did 
I really thought that I would be happy and impressed with these. And obviously these are basically a smooth sport bike tire that just has a bunch of grooves cut into it, if it makes sense. A lot of these other tires, and that's probably how they're made anyway, but they're they're definitely a more knobby looking tire. They're just, you know, smaller treads, like I was talking about, spaced a little bit wider, where these, I mean, they have wide spacing, but I mean, I guess the best way to describe them is that they are a big block tire. And sort of like the Shinko 804, 805 big blocks, they are really, really pretty good, both on and off road, but, only good in the sense that they are a 50-50 tire. They're definitely not a good tire in my book anyway. I think if you are somebody that, that really is attached to road performance and wants the smoothest tire that you can get with a decent amount of off-road ability, I think this isn't a bad option, but I, I took these uh, actually just down my driveway in the snow and could tell that they were not nearly as grippy as the Tusk D Sports or the Motos Tractionators. I really don't entirely understand it. I think a lot of the problem is just that, again, the tires that were on my 701 don't really look like this. They are spaced quite a bit tighter. Um, and I think, honestly, that's probably the, the biggest problem. I think that block size versus the space between is really kind of the biggest driving factor between how a tire feels, both forward traction and lateral traction. And I, I was just not impressed with these. So, I mean, if you're somebody that likes these, that's great for you. I think they're just not aggressive enough for me. And maybe it was all in my head. But now that I've got a set of D-Sports on the 701, I mean, in, until it warms up to, to 80 degrees and I'm riding on the highway and they're making the bike skate all over the place, which hopefully won't happen, uh, I'm going to be nothing but happy uh, that I stuck these D-Sports on here even though it almost broke my finger uh, trying to get the things mounted. If you, ever, if you ever buy a 701, don't try to change the tires yourself. Just take it and have somebody else do it. You'll be glad you did. Which is sort of disappointing because boy, would I like to get a set of these and test them out on the 701. But I think maybe I'll just have to wait for whatever bike I actually decide on if I ever decide on a bike and pick one up. These definitely look like, I think they will be a pretty interesting tire to test. They sort of look like, I don't know, maybe a mix between like a Tractionator and a, and a D-Sport, I guess, which is maybe kind of what they were going for. Definitely a pretty cool looking tire. Obviously not super aggressive and made kind of more for adventure bikes, which is why they've got, got it on the KTM here. But it is really a, a very interesting looking tire and something that I'm looking forward to test out. I don't know necessarily that these will be better or that I will like them more than the D-Sports on obviously a, a bike that's light enough to, to, to run them. Will they be better than Tractionators? Maybe for the price? It's pretty hard to beat that. Back's a little bit expensive. Oh, and you can't even get this for a KLR, huh? Yeah, so this would fit on the 701, I think. It'd fit a DR650 or an XR as well. And a lot of the other newer bikes that are coming out with 18-inch rears. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If it was, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what your favorite tire is or if you think that I'm wrong about any of these tires or if I'm right and you've had a similar experience. I would definitely be interested in hearing that. I think there definitely needs to be a place for a conversation about tires. And I really do think it's silly that people get so upset about it. I think a tire is the most important aftermarket part that you can put on a motorcycle. And I think... If you're, if you're like me or like I used to be anyways, you have to get it out of your head that tires are just part of a motorcycle. They are not. The tires are a tool. They are something that you need to specifically pick for the type of riding that you're going to do. And I think while there are a lot of options out there, honestly, like I said, I, I would definitely go with a Motaz Tractionator if, if the price doesn't bother you at all. I, I think that is going to be your single best option without doing a whole bunch of research and you know trial and error like I've done. I think those really are are the tire to go with. However, like I said, I am pretty excited to to see what these things bring at a little bit lower of a price point. So thanks for watching guys. Take care. Stay safe. Stay swanky. Get out. Enjoy this beautiful world. No matter what type of tire you have, just be really careful in, until you get a, a decent set of off-road tires. Don't scare yourself or hurt yourself. <laughs>